Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash broadcast. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Broad topics, broad minds, broad hosts, but not just for broads. This is Broadcast with Kim Goldman and Jackie McDougal. Everybody, welcome to Broadcast. Hi, I'm glad I could be here. I do because it's still so funny. Like, I'm still here. You know. um, so hey, that's go, gonna be my tagline. Can we go back for a half a second? I guess so. Audible.com. Yeah, that's my new like obsession. First of all, I could listen to your book. I, no offense to you, uh, you know, books are hard. <laughs> They're, no, but hard, it's hard to get to reading and get the time. But when I'm commuting or mm-hmm. Um, even cleaning the kitchen with my little earbuds I'm doing now, and I can listen. Your books are on there. Yeah. Um, for an author, yeah. I'm a terrible reader. So I, I, I'm I learning because right. Audible's giving us such an awesome, you know, partnership. Um, yeah. But I, I I do believe that that is a good way to listen, especially if you spend time in the car. But I don't. I have like a 30-second commute. Voice. Oh, yeah. I don't put you to sleep? No. Oh. No. Oh. Medicine. Well, thank you. Medi- <laughs> Um, it's going to be in no, a meditation my, app. My yeah. current obsession, though, is a book called You Are a Badass, oh. How to Stop Doubting Your Greatness and Start Living an Awesome Life. Oh. Um, it's from Jen Cicero, or Cicero, or I'm not sure um, oh. how to say it, but, uh, and I've already tweeted at her that we need to have her on the show, because I'm really loving, you know, I'm, this is where you and I are like the, I, I love the self-help, meditation, yeah. you know, grow my mind and, and every day. And, and your heart will follow. <laughs> Grow my mind. No, there's a song in there somewhere. Yeah. For your mind. Yeah, I know. Um, but I love all that stuff. So there are tons of books. No, I think it's fantastic. It's a great way to, a great way to 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 move through things and to you know be able to multitask. I can't multitask. That's the problem when it comes to like I have to pay attention if someone's talking to me. And maybe because I work in mental health, also I don't like to have people talking in my ear. Like it it confuses me. Like maybe I'm hearing voices. Right. You know, I used to work, I used to work in a psych hospital. So I was always like checking to make sure that the voices in my head were actually mine as opposed to somebody else's. Um, wouldn't it be the other way around? Well, like that I wasn't hearing, like having hallucinations or like, you know, I was having a schizophrenic break or multiple personalities or anything like that. Well, if you do, will you promise me one thing? Yeah. You'll do it live here on broadcast? Yes. (laughs) I will will schedule it. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. anyway, um. So last night was uh, the Grey's Anatomy finale. Mm -hmm. Did you watch it? I did watch it. Okay. Do not speak about it because I know. Did you watch it? No. Oh. Not yet. I watch it usually on Friday night. Okay. Yeah. Today's my kid's birthday, so I'm sure I'll get to it. Yeah. But I know Callie's leaving. Um, I I just, I assume that she's going to New York, but probably not because there is nobody like Shonda when it comes to season finales. Yeah, look at Kim is making a face. No, because you told me not to say anything. I can't say anything. On. We're just move on. We'll talk about it next week. <laughs> okay, because I, yeah, well, I can't believe you didn't see anything online though. Like, well, I saw that she's leaving. Okay, I didn't see how, and so now I'm not looking online. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, maybe yeah. Uh, uh, I have something to say. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll have to do a special episode of. Uh, okay. <laughs> of Sarah oh. Ramirez, right? Um. Anyway. Yeah. So it's what is t- May twentieth. Spring is just flying by. I know. You know, it's crazy. My son uh, is finishing. Uh, oh, May 20th. Happy birthday to oh, Kobe right, McDumel. Kobe. <laughs> um, uh, my son is finishing his first year of seventh grade, and it totally snuck up on me because I was still in elementary school brain, and they stay on uh, for they stay in school for until like the middle of June. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, do to do. And then I got this email coming home that said they're turning in their, their uh, textbooks. And I'm thinking, why are they turning in their textbooks like three weeks early? And then it dawned on me, he's like got a school in like two weeks, less than two weeks. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. June 3rd for my kids. Yeah. Yeah. My June 2nd. But like, it's so weird. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do now. Like, cause in Massachusetts where I grew up and you grew up in Chicago, like you went until like almost (laughs) the end of, I think the earliest we ever got out was like June 18th because we didn't have that many snow days. Oh, is that, I can't even remember. I know we started later in the year, but yes. you know, like after Labor Day. Right, right. Um, I don't know. I just suddenly was like, oh, geez, I need to have things planned for my kid. I'm like always late to the party in that regard. Yeah, you better keep him busy. He's going to basketball camp. Uh, all summer? Uh, no, up uh, for about a week in um, 
Oakland. He's going to Warriors basketball camp because he's a big wow. basketballer. And then um, I'm sending him to. Uh, it, no, it's a day camp, but he's going with some friends, and so he'll stay with their family. Uh, and then I'm sending him to an overnight camp um, in Malibu that it's a camp for um, blind kids, and so he's a sighted peer cool. camper. And so um, they, the sighted kids, they 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 blindfold them and ask them to participate in certain events um, so that they can learn and appreciate what it feels like to be blind. And then like, yeah, I'm super excited. He's doing it for, um, because he wants to, but he's also going to do it for his mitzvah project for his bar mitzvah that's coming up later this year. So that's an overnight camp and so I'm super excited. Wow. Yeah. That, that, that's like eight days of summer. Yeah. It goes wild this summer. (laughs) Woohoo. But, but before summer, um, I've been spring clean, look around the studio a little bit. Um, other than the dead, um, what is that? A uh, uh, plant? Yeah. Uh, what was that thing? Uh, that looks so like mine, we, so I don't even know what it's originally called because mine looks like that. Redone, I had one job. One job, and was to keep that plant alive. Yeah, but um, how come neither one of us, we're having a, a senior moment. Uh, I, have, I have that, that plant. It's totally common. <laughs> Uh, uh, oh, uh, a li- not a lilac. Um, oh my gosh, hilarious! Anyway, mine looks just like that. Yes, they all look yes. just like that. I love those too. Those things that we can't come up with. This is Does funny. Happen to you guys? Please tell us all the time. Yes. Welcome to your forties, ladies. Right. Mm-hmm. But you were telling me you're doing a little spring cleaning yourself. I did. So I found out this new trick. So way back when Facebook started, I didn't know how it worked, and so. <laughs> I think I just accepted everybody's friendships. And then somewhere along the way, someone said you can create lists and you can create privacy settings and you can put people in certain places so they don't see everything. Well, that's too much of a yes, pain in the tush for me. Yeah, so what I've done in the last couple months is um, as birthdays come up, you know, the little reminders, mm-hmm. if I look at it and go, who the heck are you? Delete. <laughs> And that's how I'm cleaning out my Facebook list. Happy it's birthday. so liberating. I'm you. Sorry. <laughs> I know. Isn't that terrible? But it's actually because I. Not brilliant. I know. That's it's, a good thing. I know, to do. but I I don't yeah. know people, and I realize that, old, that the older I get, I, I'm trying to create some privacy and some boundaries and um, Facebook. And I didn't know about Facebook, and I don't like this that even if you don't become friends with someone, they can still follow you. Well, if you have the follow button. I thought everybody can. How do you turn off the? Mind well, blown. How do you turn if off they, the... If they go to friend you and you don't accept, they don't see the things for your friends. They can see you public stuff. Yeah, but then I have to go back in and I have to make sure that what I'm what I'm posting is public versus private. Like but you don't post publicly on your... I do because I forget to change the settings so that it's private. You just have a, a, a friends setting that only speak for your friends. Well, anyway, this I'm learning, but I don't like that I have all these people that can follow without... I don't know who they are. Like the whole right. point of being able to accept requests is that you can pick and choose. Right. But they can, they can, like I said, they can only follow the public stuff. So your job is to not post publicly. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Like anyway, my whole so brilliant I'm, idea is just blown. So yeah. I'm excited. I mean, we still have a little more talking to do. But today on the show, uh, Jenny Hutt from Just Jenny on Sirius XM. Fabulous. She is so fun and so opinionated. And um, I listen to her. Uh, they She used to be on during my commute in the morning. And serious, I don't know what's happening. I'll have to ask her, but like, stop messing with my programming. Oh, yeah, they need to <laughs> check with you first. On, you know, at 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 noon Pacific, which is, oh. you know, and so at noon, I have to go and, like, run some errands because... <laughs> Can't miss you, just I Jenny. Just Jenny. So she's going to be on in uh, in just a little bit. And she, last month, was on the cover of Oprah Magazine. Oh. So we're going to ask her about that. Wow. Too. She got on there. She got to sit alongside the, the queen. Queen. The queen. Mm-hmm. Um, so, did you see on our Facebook page this week, though, since we were talking about Facebook, and then I took a little sidebar there, that we posted the dad um, who was parenting a sick child, his sick child. Yeah. And there was a photo of him in the shower holding the baby. Right. The baby. Yeah. And um, they were both naked, because that's usually what we do Happen in the shower. In the shower. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not unusual. Right. And uh, the internet is going crazy you know it's not the internet it's people on the internet that are like have nothing else to do like i don't get it i don't get it like why do we like i thought it was beautiful i thought it was tender i thought it was appropriate i thought it's what parents do and i don't know why we wouldn't do that if it was a woman sitting there with her baby we might we might say something about her nipple showing because god forbid you know we see that right um but i'm i'm just i'm so sad about 
our state of affairs when that's the stuff that we get upset about, you yeah. know, and that we shame this family for. I mean, I, I read the article and, you know, I, the little boy was sick from salmonella poisoning or some mm-hmm. something, and mm-hmm. he was basically throwing up and having diarrhea at the same time. And so they went into the shower to, like, soothe him and comfort him and clean him off at the same time. I'm thinking, that's brilliant multitasking. <laughs> Honestly, I was impressed. Yeah, and I just, I'm, I'm just disappointed that that's the stuff that we get so you know, upset about. And I wrote on the post too, but I, I, would I have shared that image? Probably not, because it is a, a I would have taken the photo because it is a, a tender, amazing, beautiful family moment. Um, I don't know that I would have, and me, the the queen of oversharing, right? I just, I don't know that I would have shared. Necessarily that. Did did she? Uh, I forgive me because I might my forgot because I turned forty and I forget everything. Um, <laughs> did she sh- write an article about it or was it just a personal post? I mean, a personal picture. I don't remember. Um, by the time I saw it, it was like all written about. So I'll have. To oh, write okay. That. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do you think that makes a difference whether you're writing about the situation and that you caught? No, I was just curious, like if she wrote it as a post, like what the purpose of it. I was just, I, I think I missed that part. Um, but I think that people are trying to connect online. They're trying to share experiences and and you know so. Well, I but I appreciate if there was a moment of putting this because we, uh, you know, we've talked about this on our show a lot about how dads are just seen as fill in. You know, they're the babysitters, right. you know, and that they don't take a strong role. And I, 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 that's what I saw when I saw the picture. Like, of course, that's what he's going to do. He's the dad. Like, right, right. and so if that was the purpose behind it, then I applaud that. I mean, yeah. I appreciate the privacy and the, I, no, no, I, no, I, I, I that too, yeah. Where it's like, you know what? We should be celebrating all parents, dads, moms, and, you know. Have- but it's the nudity factor. It's the fact that people ha- are uncomfortable with seeing men nude with their children. They are. You know who I want to ask about this? No. I want to ask Jenny Hutt. Ooh. Yes. So we're going to come right back uh, with Jenny right after this. You're listening to Broadscast with Kim Goldman and Jackie McDougal, the most riveting hour of radio ever. Welcome back to Broadscast. I'm so glad I stayed for this. <laughs> I know. You stay every time. I do. I'm like, as, as much as you try to get away. Um, so I'm very excited because I'm geeking out a little bit. So we've got Miss Ms. Jenny Hutt on the phone from Just Jenny, Sirius XM. Hi, Jenny. Hello. I, you can't really geek out from me. You need to aim way higher. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am because, you know, you used to be on my morning commute and I would listen every morning. And I don't know if you know, but we're best friends. So um, <laughs> I did. I knew. I heard. I was, we're talking about it. And so then they moved you to 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 Pacific. And now I have to like schedule nope. my errands around you. Right, but now I'm 6 p.m. East, 3 Pacific. Oh, 6 p.m. That's that's right. I don't know why I just said that because I listen to you when has I look at my kids. Because I've been in the morning your time. I've been midday your time. I've been everywhere. So it's really, it's not your fault for so not. Did that throw off your whole day? Like you had a sweet little gig happening. Yeah, it's um, it, it's actually fine. I'm so happy to be on SiriusXM. I've been there for 10 and a half years. Wow. And yeah, and I had a co-host for many years, and then I didn't anymore. And when I stopped having my co-host, SiriusXM still had me and gave me my own show, and so I'm only grateful. I don't really care if they put me on. As long as I'm on, like, in the waking hours, so right, right. I talk every night, I'm pretty good. Well, that's awesome. And I love that, you know, uh, because Kim and I started our show because we would talk about trending topics and things that were happening, and we'd be like, you know, these passionate discussions. And then we're like, we should start recording this. Right. You know? And so I feel like when I listen to you, it's the same thing that you're, you and your producer, Nakia, you know, she, I'm like the Nakia. Stalker. I love Nakia so much. She has changed my life. She has just made my life so much better. That's awesome. Yeah. We need a Nakia. We started our show doing it at night when we could have wine. Oh yeah. That was dangerous. Yeah. That was fun actually. And then we had to be, quiet and and be approved by some radio god somewhere and then we move to the more it's not well, that's so. the problem with i'm gonna start spiking on, my coffee you know, regular radio and not serious that we have to yeah. be polite 
in some ways. Yeah. Right, I guess you have to, I suppose, well, isn't it just you can't go blue? You can't use certain words, yeah. but. We got, we, we, I used vagina once and like the, the eyeballs raised in the room. They're like, Kim, it's vagina. I'm like, yeah, we have vagina. And I kept We're saying it. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe vagina became a taboo word for you like that. We were, yeah, that's a whole other show. Okay, yeah. so speaking of vagina. Oh, we were, see how I did there? <laughs> we were talking earlier before uh, you came on about, did you see the picture of the guy um, naked in the shower holding his baby? And he was just like, it was a beautiful parenting. Um, we're going to put it on our website too so other people can see it. But I'll go look at it now. So it's a, if I write man holding vagina, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not a he's, he's holding a baby. And, yeah. Man holding Baby in the, in the shower. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can shower. go to uh, Facebook to the broadcast page, either way, whichever is easier. Yeah. Um, I just want to see it to know what we're. Here we go. Facebook pic of dad creating a baby in shower goes viral. Yeah. One. So the internet has, we were laughing about this internet. The, the internet has spoken and they're like disgusted that there's this image of this man in the shower. And this, the backstory is the baby is sick and has throwing up and having diarrhea at the same time. So he's trying to cuddle the baby and soothe the baby and clean the baby at the it's same time. Baby. It's a boy. Is it a boy? I, I believe so. I was thinking, yeah. So people are. Yeah. So people are very upset that this dad is naked with his kids. And so we were talking about like, is that appropriate? Should they have shared the picture? So we thought you would probably have an opinion. I um, mean, listen, I, I, because it's the world that we live in today, mm-hmm. I wouldn't share the picture just because we live in this really crazy society where there is no innocence. But when my kids who are now 17 and almost 16 were little, I mean, group showers were just part of the regular routine. And, right. and certainly my husband and my son, had we had digital photography at the time, had they been in the shower, I might've taken such a picture that's not showing anything. A, right. but we're weird. We've become really weird. I mean, my daughter, she's the one turning almost 16 and there are many days that I'm in the shower and she walks in and gets right in with me. And we ended up showering together and we laughed about it because I'm like, can you leave? Can I have five minutes to breathe? May I just have five? Like, can I just shower? I want to wash. I want to wash. I don't want to be poked at and pointed at and touched. And because that's what she does. She's almost 16. She let we, I love her. We love each other. And she laughs at my aging body (laughs) because that's her job. But obviously we don't take pictures of that, but that's because she's almost 16. But I, I just don't. I mean, it's innocent and it's innocent, but I get how people would, would freak out. I had more issue. I have to tell you with another viral post and I'm not sure if you saw this one, mm-hmm. but it was one of those, you're not going to believe what you read when you read this. God. Like uh, she what, called him over at two o'clock in the morning. And when he arrived, what he saw would have made anyone go running. And it was this woman who was divorced and she had her boyfriend come over in the middle of the night because her three little kids were sick, like two years old, four years old, and six. And she said, if you come over right now, you're in it or you're not. And then they end up getting married. But I'm such a crazy, nervous lunatic that I'm like, I would not want a random, but now I'm married for almost, uh, for almost 19 years. So it doesn't really, but I'm, I wouldn't want a random boyfriend coming to help me clean up my sick kids when they were, Little, why would he be How interested in that? Together? At that point, I feel like they were only together like a little bit. Oh, okay. Now okay. they're together seven years and married, but at that point it was new. That was her test that if he <laughs> came over, he was in it? <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't want a single guy, a still single guy with no kids, so interested in helping me with my sick children. Why would he be interested in my sick children? Why does he like children? See where I go? <laughs> I did not go there. I did not. I always am terrible. I I have to say, I I often do as well, because if you go back to the the dad in the shower, I was saying before that, you know, taking the photo, the the actual act, and you you had made a point like, was it a boy? But either way, it's a baby. But we wouldn't do that if it was a woman holding her child. Why is it different if it's a man? It isn't. But and but I think the reason it doesn't bother me also is I feel like the mother was taking the picture, right? Who took the picture? She was in the shower. It was her random boyfriend. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> her friend was cradling her infant son. That would bother me. But if that's 
his dad, then it's his dad. Well, there was there was an interesting comment. It was a, from a comedian, um, and he he said that he he w- he has gotten in the bathtub with his kids, and he said sometimes it's just easier to get in. Right. You know, right. when he said, you know, kids need to be cleaned, and girls have vaginas. I keep saying vagina, and they need to be cleaned, and sometimes it's just easier to do that. And why should we rely on the woman to just be the one to do that? And you know, and I I was like. Awesome. I love that. But again, it goes back to the oversharing part. But if it was a woman, I don't think people would be freaking out because there was another picture that went around and people were like, oh, isn't that tender and beautiful with the woman holding her sick baby in the shower? And no one said a thing. Because women are I never think, messed up. I, I think the problem is we've forgotten that people are supposed to and usually do have healthy boundaries. And so even when they're caring for their naked, sick child, they have healthy boundaries. They're not doing anything inappropriate with their kid. They're just taking care of their kid. They're not right. thinking anything like um, dirty or lurid. They, they're parents taking care of their children. But as a, we as a society are all so twisted because we've heard such horrible things and about people without boundaries that we go right there. Is this one of those situations when it most likely isn't? Because most of the time, parents aren't doing the bad things to their kids and their kids' bodies. So, I mean, yeah. it's yeah. Not, well, you can't show anything, and he doesn't even show the baby's tushy. I mean, nothing. It's a profile of both of them. Nothing is showing. Right, but I think you know it's interesting. I I I, I am a single mom, and um and my son with my girlfriends, it was always like. Auntie Michelle or Auntie Lisa and their boyfriends or their husbands, not their boyfriends, but their husbands became the uncle because they were around before he was born. And there yes. came a point, though, that I was saying to my kid, like at some point, Auntie Lisa or Uncle Siri are not supposed to be seeing you naked. And so how there's this, we, you know, because you're not his mother and they're right. not his mother. But at some point, I had to create that boundary with my kid to make sure that he knew what was appropriate touching and inappropriate. And it's just an interesting conversation that I don't know that I would have had that about my girlfriend as much as I would have about my girlfriend's husband. And I, you know, it's, it's this, and I, I, and sidebar, I do counseling for a living and I work with teenagers who plenty of my teens that I work with have been sexually assaulted by their family members. And, and you know, it's, 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 it's really, confusing in my brain sometimes of the double standard that I even create subconsciously. And, and, um, but I, I don't know. I think that we're so quick to assume that everything is so bad. Like what you're saying, we're so quick to assume that someone has a, has a, you know, a, a, a morbid brain working and that they're going to brutalize and sexualize these kids. And I, I'm just I'm most, sad I that I think most of the time that's not, I listen, I think Obviously, it happens in families, and it's disgusting and horrible. And I think that conversation you had with your son was really responsible. I mean, years and years ago, before my kids went to sleepaway camp and my friend's kids went to sleepaway camp, I was the mother who had to say to my friend's kid, look, this is what you have to look out for. This is inappropriate. Because my friend was so uneasy having those kind of conversations, whereas I I still have those conversations with my kids who are big and driving. I mean, it's really – but I – but it's a scary world. But the presumption is that our parents aren't going to do. So you don't have to really have that conversation with your son about you. It's about it's about your friend's boyfriend, or your friend's husband, or your friend or your friend. Frankly, nobody well, is supposed to. Nobody should be seeing them at, at this, this point, other than other than us. Or, I mean, or, I mean, yeah, I mean, listen, the naked thing is weird because I had a friend who posted a. And a friend who I knew since we were very little, but we're not current. We're just current on Facebook. And she posted a picture of her two beautiful little girls, maybe two and four, naked, full frontal naked, but like almost uh, one of those French photographs from the 70s. So just a pretty picture. And I inboxed her and I said, you got to take that down because I don't, I know it's not pornography, but... Someone else might not know it's not pornography and that it's like a weird world we live in. And she took it down. And it wasn't because I was sexualizing kids. It was really because they were naked kids. And it's, it was 2015. And I was like, eh, you probably don't want that out there. So you talk about, you you know, your daughter um, in the shower, but like what, what, at what point with your son, did it stop or has it stopped or like, yeah, yeah. So my, has it stopped? What are you kidding me? My, first of all, I wouldn't want to scar the kid for life. There's just no need for or him. Or set him up for reality. The truth. But, yeah. I mean, 
Yeah, well, that kind of reality I would hope would happen like down the road that he's <laughs> so age appropriate and then God willing, like get to grow old ish with that person and then um, no, or, or sort of, yeah, get used to women and then realize what happens to all of us. Um, but my son, my pediatrician, his pediatrician used to say, when you're starting to ask the question, when is it too late? It's already too late. Mm -hmm. So I think that the minute, I mean, he must have been three or four by the time, five, by the time I was no longer naked around him. Um, I mean, he'll, he might try to walk in the bathroom if I'm peeing, but he doesn't, there's never, but not really. Like he doesn't want to see, he yeah. doesn't, I mean, the last thing he wants to see is me and anything, but, um, minus the, uh, minus the idea of, of women oppression, fe women, be he would like me in a burqa. <laughs> Yeah, so does my son. Yeah, my son kind of dictated for us when we stopped. I mean, right. I, I remember when my son tried to tug on my tampon string, and I was like, oh, Time. I'm pretty sure, yeah, we've reached our... our... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But he be, he became more modest, and he became, yeah. you know, it, that that came with maturity for him that he was like, okay, I think I've reached my my time. I don't want to see you, and I don't want you to see me. And and I was very happy because I was like, you, like, can I please have two seconds? Can I please pee in pub in private? You know, and not have him storm in and ask me for cereal while I'm in the shower. That's you right. know, so um, yeah. Now he knocks on the door, and you know, he doesn't come in unless I say I'm in. My kids still don't knock on the door, and the thing is, if my boys walk in. They won't stay and chat with me, but they don't like, I, and, and you know, I've been through a lot of surgeries in my life. And so things don't necessarily look the way they look on other people. And so I kind of liked that when they were younger, they just got, th that was, I didn't hide myself and I wasn't ashamed of myself. Like I just, I kind of was very open because I wanted them to understand that people look and can feel, feel good. Right. And feel comfortable. In all different ways. Yeah. How but, old are your kids? All your kids? Um, well, your son is my 12. son is 12 and mm -hmm. then um my oldest is 12 today oh happy then, birthday oh, happy birthday and then um not my other son is 10 and then my daughter's nine okay adorable and, and especially with my daughter i'm very open and free because as am i yes you know, it's, it's like i don't have to i mean i don't have to look a certain way for me to feel comfortable you know? oh yeah no god no i there first of all i couldn't even try i couldn't there's no <laughs> how i mean there's my daughter and I are very, we lack boundaries. I mean, it just, and that's okay. I mean, it's, it's, I'm actually happy like you are the same kind of thing. Like let her see what this body has been through and what it looks like on the other side and how, uh, women age and we all age differently and it's all okay. And right, right. I'm, we and all I'm, have bodies. And I'm definitely full of crap though, because I don't feel comfortable like right now and you know, all that, but I certainly, it's, I should win an Academy Award when it comes to being around my daughter, you know, and, and trying to at least show her. I mean, I am comfortable in many ways more. So I think I'm 45 now. Like there are things I just don't hold on to anymore, but you know, I'm not in the place I want to be. I think Jackie, it's more important that she sees that regardless of how insecure you might be on any given day, that you're still out up functioning and doing and living. Right. I think that's really what's key because I mean, as a kid, I, kind of found when my mother was insecure, unsteady or uneasy, she would really take to the bed. Mm -hmm. And, and though that sounds luxurious to me today, right. and it's a fantasy of mine, it's not something I, I get to do no matter how I feel. I am up and out and doing my part in being in the world and being a part of society. So I think showing that example to your daughter and to daughters especially is what's even more important than the moment of not liking something about yourself physically. I think that's a battle that every woman has. And I, and your daughter, unfortunately, as good a job as you do, and I'm sure you do a phenomenal job is still going to have Absolutely. her moments because that's the world that little girls live in and big girls yeah. live in. It's really no way. Cause we were super mindful with my daughter. And, and the only thing I could tell you was my, my biggest win is that even with being a normal teenage girl turning 16 and I'm very short and she's tall and, but she's not built waif like she's adorable and beautiful. And I wouldn't change a hair on her head, but she sometimes looks at other girls who are like the string beans, like literally two legs and a vagina and there's nothing else holding it together. Right. 
and and she but her her body and her weight never eclipses her worth and that to me is the win because yes. for me it was always my weight and my shape eclipsed anything else about me nothing else mattered so she doesn't think like that absolutely and i think you know and listening to your show and um you know your your journey from being overweight to where you are now and it's i mean it's a huge part i love that you're so vocal about it because you let other people go, oh, it's okay to talk about that I feel this way, or which yeah. is fantastic. Um, but I mean, how big of a win was that being on the cover last month of Oprah Magazine? Um, it was, uh, it was crazy. It was surreal and it was unexpected. I just thought that I was, I just thought I was a part of a group story in the magazine about women and weight, which is why I had volunteered to do it because I just I talk about as every Wednesday's weight Wednesday on my show so I, I it's in my wheelhouse to talk about body issues so I was like okay sure and it's Oprah so I, I knew the magazine would be graceful in whatever they were right, doing right. And, and empowering so when I when I got to the shoot and found out that it was a cover and I was going to be in a unitard and that <laughs> with my hair all the way slicked back it was kind of trippy but it, it's been really exciting and cool and Oprah was incredibly gracious and generous and fantastic. So it was, yeah, it was really neat. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, 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 you know, uh, you know, even though you, you're at the size you probably want to be, you're, you look fantastic. Like you still, it doesn't take away the struggle still every single day, correct? Every single day. I'm starving myself right now because I know there's going to be another shoot in a few months because they're going to follow up with us. And I'm trying to lose five stupid pounds. It's so <laughs> a joke, but, um, but yeah, I, I starve. There's no, there's no day that I wake up and I'm like, yes, it's all over. I'm good now. Cause I'm not, it's, if you have a weight issue and so many of us do, then, then that stays with you and, and you just learn to make friends with it. At least that's what I've done. I laugh at it. I think it's funny and silly and ridiculous. And and so it's, it's just a part of who I am and that's cool. I'll go anywhere to find what I want to eat and I'll be very specific and, and some might call it disordered. I just call it honest. And uh, yeah, so it, it works for me somehow. I've maintained a really big weight loss for six years. So, right, so far. Incredible. The maintenance is really, it's really hard. hard. It's hard. Well, I think it's the mental maintenance, you know, I mean, I think that's what you're saying that, you know, to, to mentally prepare yourself every day in terms of what you're yep. going to give yourself and what you're going to, you know, restrict yourself from having. I, I, I mean, I think we all have those, whether it's food or alcohol or sleep or whatever it is, we have to mentally prepare ourselves every day for what we allow to be part of our existence and what we, we want out of it. So I think those also boundaries, emotionally, I mean, yeah. Kim, look at what you've gone through in your life and, and you have weathered how many storms that you still get up and do what you have to do and take care of others and your son and live your life. Right. We all want to, who doesn't want to crumble up and do none of it. It's uh yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> you want to get up and out all the yeah. Time? Yeah. If you do, Jackie, that's amazing. Well, as much as, you know, what Kim has been through isn't anything like weight loss, the one thing that they have in common is it's daily. Like, we've yeah. talked about this on the show so many times that, like, you know, you think 21 years later, like, you wouldn't have to go through the number one show on cable, you know, being about your life. Like, yeah. And, and, you know, the, the constant reminders and the people posting and the, the, the letters sent, like, so... Uh. I mean, and, and you, Kim, like not to, it's okay. you know, I'm putting you on your, my pedestal because I love you, but like, you know, you get up every day and not just show up, but right. make a difference in other people's lives. And so I That's think, okay. and you know, you to a totally different extent, Jenny, are, are getting up and sharing your struggle and allowing other people to talk about their struggles. And I think yeah. that's what's well, really important. Right. important. Yeah. And it's not like, you know, I talk about being the queen of oversharing on, on social media, but I, I, I have people who talk to me about like, oh my, I can't believe you're talking about that like publicly. Like, that's great because I had that problem. And, you know, I, I just went and got my black belt last Sunday, right, right? right? So, but I am the fattest I have ever been in my entire life. So I'm looking at these pictures and I'm not going, oh my God, I'm so amazing. I got a black belt. I'm going, how did I get so big? Right. You know? First of all, cut yourself a break because the fact that you're a black belt I mean, I'm not going to lie and say I would give 10 pounds, I'd gain 10 pounds to be a black belt. I won't, I won't lie, but 
I wish I could be, I wish I could kick anybody's ass. I can't even kick 10 pound dog's ass I'm holding. <laughs> There's nothing. I'm the least scary, least person to fear ever in terms of physical strength. So that's extraordinary that you got a black belt. That's, I have zero athleticism in me. Zero. Well, that's so exactly I, why this is such a big deal for me because I was a softball player. I was a cheerleader, but I was the one on the bench and I was like the chubby cheerleader. You know, like I was just, I always felt like I was, I was there, I was in the game, but sort of, I'm sort of on the sidelines. So for me, Taekwondo has been that thing where I could push myself and, and train, you know, and, and you, go, so cool. you don't go zero to 60 in a day. Like yeah. that's what it's for us who don't feel like athletes who can work toward that. Right. Yeah, but to change your narrative about your body yeah. because clearly you're healthy and you're strong. So what else really matters? You're a freaking black belt. I mean, I don't, Good, that's <laughs> incredible. That's- but I, I think it's, I, you know, I, we, we, again, we talk about this a lot too, that I think women were so, and not, not all of us obviously, but we, we diminish our, our worth and we diminish our potential because awesome. it's yeah. hard to, it's hard to accept, um, compliments. You know, we're, we, Jackie and I joke that we're always saying we're sorry to each other, um, you know, for silly things like having an opinion. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know, and I, and I, and I, I, that to me is like a mental workout every day to really train myself every day to feel good about what I'm doing, to, to be able to pat myself on the back and not be a jerk about it, but to be able to acknowledge that, I've done something well, um, and that I'm making a difference. It's hard. We don't often do that. We just, we just go through life and we don't look for acknowledgement. And I think that, you know, we have to find that from, like you said, Jenny, to change the narrative. And I think it's really hard for women to do that. Right. Well, cause we've been told so often not to, right. I think right. we have a really, that I think hopefully, I think things are shifting a little bit because more people are being vocal about the levels of inequality based on gender or race or sexuality or myriad of reasons. But uh, so I think with women, that'll come, I think. And I think it has to start with women lifting other women up rather than tearing one another down, because I do. I do. I see it. I see it through work. I'm sure you see it through work yeah. on social media. And even in a school parking lot, women are very quick to cut each other rather than boost one another. And I, I find it really upsetting and really, frankly, weird. Um, and I'm not sure. I, I mean, it's rhetorical. I kind of know why we do it. Cause it's, again, it's societal, but that has to change too, because there's enough to go around and we should all try to help one another instead of sneaking cream in your dieting friend's coffee. (laughs) I think that's the thing is people don't believe and we aren't raised to believe that abundance is everywhere. Right. Like money is not finite. Like, you know, if somebody else gets a a cool job with more money, you're like, oh, less money for me. It doesn't work that way. So if somebody else gets success or love or something like that, like should hope that because maybe that'll lessen their angst in some way and open them up to be a kinder, more generous soul. That's the hope. I I have found the older I, and I'm 44, um, that I have a lot of women that, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, bragger. Um, I have a lot of women that, that will make like cutting remarks, you know, about things, you know, and I, and I've only noticed it lately because I'm more tuned in. I think that I'm like, wow, that's not very supportive and that's not very encouraging. And I feel like I'm pretty encouraging and maybe I'm not, I don't know, but I'm realizing now that there are lots of women that are not supportive of each other. And I never really believed that that was a, a phenomenon. Success means their failure or something. Yeah. And I just, I, I'm, I'm really trying again, you know, to, to try to be more encouraging and more supportive and, and all those things, because I, I, I do find that we we're we're our own people, you know, and I feel like we can learn so much from each other and why we're not willing to open ourselves up to it kind of disappoints me in our, in our, in our little group. I agree. I, yeah. you're preaching to the choir. Do you, I have a snoring puppy on me. It's like, <laughs> that's awesome. Do you see it um, any different though? Like, you know, being in New York or the East coast versus, you know, cause I grew up in Boston. So uh, I went to school outside of Boston. Where did you go? I went to Tufts. Oh, well, there you go. I've been, I've, I've driven by Tufts. <laughs> <laughs> Somerville and Medford. Yeah, yeah. I lived in Somerville for, uh, before I moved to LA. So, yeah. um, but I think that on the East coast, there, there's a different mentality. Do you feel like it's as competitive with women? I mean, you're in the city though. So 
I mean, entertainment isn't as uh, plentiful in New York City, so I don't really see it. And I I live outside the city. So really, where I live, most of my friends don't work. And I just lead a very average, like, not a soccer. My kids don't play soccer, so I'm not a soccer mom. But I'm a mom at the parking lot or just I'm in the grocery store. I mean, I lead, like, the most unglamorous everyday existence but i guess in new york city yeah where there's um women in media i yeah it's competitive it's not the in in los angeles unfortunately it's like all entertainment and if it's an abnormality or it's uh unusual if you're not in entertainment in that in that center place wherever i am when i'm in la because i would only be in la for work so i feel it more in los angeles than i do here but i'm not but maybe that's just because the saturation of entertainment in LA is so much greater than it is here. Right. Right. Out here. And I, and I say to my husband too, like when we go back to Massachusetts, I, um, you know, we'll go out to a restaurant and the wait staff is like, they're the wait staff. They, they, that is, you could be, that's 20, job. You could be 55, like whatever that, and, yeah. and that's her job or that's his job out here. It's like, you're that until something else. Out That's here, right. They're always looking for that next thing. And so I feel like it happens with women too, where they're like, what can you do for me? Like, what yeah. do you have that will get me to my next level? Well, I wonder if that's a generational thing though, because I, I, I'm of a, again, we are all in the same. You're less than a year younger. No, as I'm saying, we're all in the same age demographic. But I, I was raised, my dad was at his first job for, you know, 20 something years. I mean, I think that there's a work ethic that has also shifted and that there's people that are like onto the next thing. I mean, I don't know. I find that with my staff that I hear, they're, they're always looking for the next thing as opposed to being loyal, being committed, you know, having that strong work ethic. And I don't know if that's tied to what you're saying. I'm not sure if that's just a female thing or if that's, I, I don't, I don't. It's tied to, I think it's, some of that is, is fear-based that people don't think they can grow in a group. But, yeah. uh, cause I look at, I look at my relationship with my producer, Nakia, and my hope is always that as my show grows, that her role will grow, that we will grow, that we will continue to keep, um, doing more together because that's all I would want her to keep doing better. That's right. just my hope for her. And I think she would say the same, say the same thing. So I think maybe it's more that people get nervous what's going to happen to them. So then they jump ship. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah. I also wish people would be more honest about all of it instead of like on the side checking things out where they can make something happen. Dive into that, Dive into a, little that a little bit more. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I think that when people are duplicitous, it makes everything worse. So... I'd rather just be up front. If there's an opportunity that I get, then I, I'll talk to my producer about it because the goal is that the two of us right. will get to have these opportunities together, that it's sort of we're a team. So if you're going to be a team, then you have to be a team. Right. And even if someone, if she got some phenomenal opportunity that didn't involve me, I would only want her to do it and go for it because I right. want her to have the best life she could possibly have. Absolutely. But. But I think the both of us would say that we want to keep working together in the way that we are um, and grow what we're doing because we work well together. So it just, it would be hurtful if either one of us, I think, was sort of looking elsewhere without acknowledging the other person. Well, I see that a lot in television, though, too, that um, I had a small stint in TV. But when when you find your crew, so to speak, you stick together, like directors will bring their team together. I mean, there's something about being, you know, being um, about surrounding yourself with good people that promote your success equally as much as they're wanting their own. And I think, you know, you're only as good as you who you surround yourself with. And so but that that I hope is, is the norm, but there are definitely people that are just out for themselves and they don't care who they steamroll in the, in the, in the meantime. And, and I see that even in my nonprofit work, you know, it's disgusting. by the way, yeah, I, yeah. I say this all the time that I, I, I think I'd be much further along in my career if I were to see you next Tuesday, but it's just yeah. not my nature. Right. I know. I've always but been so painfully you- loyal that I, I've missed okay. out on things because I'm like, oh, I'll stay. You've been so good to me. Ten years later, I'm still miserable because I'm loyal. I'm like that little dog <laughs> right. on the lap snoring. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, but I think that, you know, when 
push comes to shove, waking up, looking at yourself in the mirror and feeling like you are a good person with integrity. Yes. That matters more than any of any of the success, you know, quote unquote success that you can find. Oh, I would agree so, with that. Yeah. I would agree. Definitely. All right. Well, we have to wrap it up. So where else? People can find you on Sirius XM. Uh, yes. Stars. That's one. Yeah. So Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. East, 3 West on Sirius XM Stars, which is 109 on the Sirius platform. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, I'm not sure if it's 109 on XM. It is, but actually. You can also catch my show on demand on the Sirius XM app. And um, I'm on Instagram at just Jenny Hutt, on Twitter at Jenny Hutt, on Facebook at Jenny Hutt. I'm Snapchatting because that's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> we'll it's link so to all, silly. We'll and link I have to all of your website. channels on uh, broadcast.com. But tell us, where's your website? Oh, justjenny.com. Justjenny.com. Thank you so much, Jenny. Thank Thank you, Jenny. We can't wait to see your update on the Oprah magazine in a couple weeks or months. I know. Yeah, months. 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 Okay, months. (laughs) Thanks for having me, girls. All right. Have a great day. (laughs) Good luck with the five pounds. Thanks. (laughs) Thank you so much to Jenny Hutt. That was awesome. We will be right back. You're listening to Broadscast with Kim Goldman and Jackie McDougal, the most riveting hour of radio ever. Hi, I stayed. You I'm just did. kidding. That was a fun show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Took, I I thought we were gonna go a totally different direction. I like I I you know me. I'm the tangential talker, so I like when we go out into the into the weird places because I think that's where the best stuff happens. Totally. I mean, yeah. we we always have guidelines for our show that yeah. we abandon <laughs> as soon as we start talking. <laughs> exactly. As soon as our our voiceover guy says, you know, you're listening to broadcast, we abandon all um, everything. <laughs> So, um, yeah, but it was a good show and I, and I love how honest she is and, um, you know, that she can talk about anything like us. We, yeah. We need to be best friends with her. And we're all redheads. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Some of us are more natural than others. Oh, wow. <laughs> I like it. But thank you so much for listening. Uh, don't forget to head over to audible.com, audibletrial.com slash broadcast for your free audiobook download and 30 day trial. And, uh, anything else, Kim? Any parting words? Um, no. Have a great uh, weekend, and we will see you next week. Find us on broadcast.com or on the internet. You can just find us at broadcast somewhere. I don't know. Broadcast show, broadcast. Yeah, Google yeah. says, do you mean broadcast? Say, no. No, I don't. <laughs>